William Gargan stars as Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Murderers, by and large, probably lead very dull lives. But there's no doubt about the way most of them wind up. It's electrifying. The National Broadcasting Company presents William Gargan in another transcribed drama of mystery and adventure with America's number one detective, Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Barry Craig speaking. An office in a shabby old building on Madison Avenue isn't the ideal place to spend the summer. It isn't ideal for fall, winter, and spring either. But if you're a confidential investigator, you settle for considerably less than the ideal. When the phone rings, though, you hope. Nine times out of ten, it's only the phone company testing your reflexes. The tenth time... Craig? Barry Craig? Speaking. This is Mark Reed, Barry. Mark, I haven't heard from you Listen, and... I don't have much time. Can you get down here right away? Well, get down where? My house. The old tower house. It's right outside Dorning. That's upstate. Well, I've driven through Dorning. But don't drive. There's a train at midnight. Faster. Well, what's my hurry? Take that train. Tonight, please, Barry. But why? I can't say any more. So long. Mark. Mark. Hmm. <laughs> Quite a few years. Nothing special. We knocked over a few beers from time to time, discussed the state of the nation, admired sports cars. I'd never figured him for an especially imaginative type. On my way over to the station, I tried to tell myself it was just a fancy way of inviting me to spend a weekend in the country. But then, uh, why had there been terror in his voice? Ticket, please. Well, here you are. You're getting off at dawning, huh? That's right. Now, why do conductors always punch tickets and then keep them? Well, we don't, actually. Except when the passenger is getting off at the next scheduled stop. That's me. Uh, how long before we get to Dorning? An hour or so. Hmm. Train's kind of empty. Late run, don't get many people. Makes it nice and quiet and dull. Moon shining. Well, who does that help? Observation platform, back of the train. Well, that's nice. Gives you a better view of nothing. Well, I wouldn't say that. Oh? Blonde girl back there, too. Been there ever since we pulled out of the city. Our conductor. Oh, I ain't trying to promote romance. I'm a little worried about her. Why? The way she looked. Frightened, sort of. In fact, she stayed out there all alone for hours now. Oh, it doesn't have to mean anything. Oh, that's why I didn't take any official notice. But I'm still worried. Hmm. Maybe I'll go back and see if the moon looks the same from the observation platform, huh? Well, I think that might be a good idea. Only uh, one thing I maybe ought to tell you. What's that? She was carrying her ticket in her handbag. When she opened it to get the ticket, I noticed she was carrying something else in that handbag. What? A gun. and an observation platform sort of go together, especially when there's a moon around. The blonde and the gun are something else again. Something not nearly so nice. Oh, oh I'm sorry. Don't move. D- d- don't come any closer to me. Okay. You don't need a gun to keep me off. It's pointing right at you. I know how to use it. You might try using your brains instead. Don't try... I'm not trying anything. All I am is a passenger on this train. Sure, you'd have to say that. I never saw you before. I'm sure you never saw me before. I never saw the man who tried to kill me before either. Tried to kill you where? Back in town. But you did see him. Well, not really. It was dark. He was in a car. He shot at me. Well, what did the police say about it? I didn't go to them. I had to make the train. Why am I telling you this? I inspire confidence in small children. I'm not a small child. You're acting like one. If you let me reach into my breast pocket, I'll show you my credentials. Credentials? Yeah, my name's Craig. I'm a confidential investigator. You, you get your credentials, but you be careful. Oh, I'll be very careful. Ah, nothing lethal about a card case. 
wallet. I'll dump them on the chair here, and then I'll move away. Now, you could look at them without disturbing your aim. All right. Barry Craig. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry. Forget it. Now, put the gun away. Yes. Good. Now, what's your name? Ruth Adams. How do you do? And why would anyone be taking pot shots at you? I don't know. Any attempts on you before tonight? No. Well, what's special about tonight? This train trip? Mm, maybe I've never gone up before. Gone up to where? Dawning. The girl was small, but not skimped. She was pleasant to look at, or would have been had she not been suffering from complete panic. The fact that she was getting off at Dawning might have been a coincidence. I found out back in the club car. Another drink? Uh, no, no thanks. I, I feel a lot better already. Fine. Now, you're getting off at Dawning. Yes. And then you're going on to the tower house. <gasps> oh. Well, don't freeze up. My knowledge isn't necessarily guilty knowledge. Or well, why the old tower house? My uncle lives there. It's his house. Mark Reed? You know him? Well, he's the reason I'm on this train. He phoned me, wanted me to come out immediately. Well, I, I got a telegram from him. It was surprising because... I haven't seen him since I was a baby. He, he had a fight with my father. And, and uh, your mother was his sister? Yes. Is she alive? No, she died years ago. And your father? Uh, he's dead, too. Oh, don't think I'm just being nosy. I'm trying to find a pattern and... Uh, you know if your uncle has any other relatives besides yourself? Alive? No. Uh-huh. Well, have you found that pattern? The beginnings of one, maybe. The rest will have to wait until, well, until we get to the house, which won't be long now. We got off the train. It turned out we were the only people who got off the train. Maybe because Dawning turned out to be nothing but a decaying wooden shack by the side of the tracks. This can't be dawning. Well, it is. Sign on that shack says so. But... Hiya, folks. Uh, oh. Well, easy, Ruth. It's a cabbie. Uh, buggy's all ready for you, folks. Take you right into dawning. I'd hoped we were in dawning. <laughs> no, no. This here's only the railroad station. Town's a couple of miles south. Uh-huh. Well, lead the way. I don't have to ask you folks which hotel you'd like to stop at. Reason is, there ain't but one in dawning. <laughs> Oh, we're not going to a hotel. Oh, visiting friends, huh? That's right. Mark Reed. Reed? Yes, uh, at the old tower house. You know where it is? Yeah, I know where it is. It ain't south like the town. It's north a bit. Not very far. Just walk up the road here about a mile and a half. Oh, hold on. We're hiring you to take us there. No, you ain't. Why not? Well, the further I stay away from that place, the happier I am. Well, what's wrong with it? I don't know. I never investigated well, you could be wrong. Well, I don't want to find out, mister. Would you and the young lady like some good advice? Trains back to the city coming through in an hour. Stay here and get on it. Well, I'm not that crazy about trains. Well, you'll thank me for that advice someday. Well, I'll thank you right now. We're still going to the tower house tonight. If you're afraid to drive us there, take us into Dorning. We can get another cab there or maybe rent a car. Okay, mister. Get in. Ruth? Uh-huh. I'll take you to the tower house. Thank you. I didn't have to make no crack about my being afraid. But you are. Well, maybe I am. Maybe the reason you're so brave is because you don't know what you're getting into. I didn't know, but I didn't have to be brave about anything. I was going to visit an old friend in the country, that's all. Or was it? Barry, I don't like this. Well, I've been in better cabs. Well, there's a feeling about this trip. In the middle of the night to an old house. I love lights and people, Barry. Now, take it easy. Once we get to the house, it ought to be comfortable enough. Mark's a wonderful host. And it looks like we're practically there. Well, 
high stone wall and gate. This is it, folks. Oh, that gate's open. Must lead to a private road. You can turn in and... Well, the take... house is about a half a mile from the highway here. Well? This is where you get out. You were hired to take us to the house. This is as far as I go. I could make you change your mind. Please, Barry, don't. Okay. Let's go. Oh, uh, how much? Two bucks. Uh-huh. One, two, two dollars. You can keep the change. What change? The tip is for your courtesy and cooperation. Huh. Think you're smart. Get out of the cab and we'll discuss it. You, uh, you, you think you're smart. Somebody must love him, but it must be uphill work. Barry, I'm terrified. Oh, come on. There's nothing to be afraid of. No, nothing that we can see. It wasn't too pleasant a half mile. The girl was frightened. The wind was blowing up. There'd be rain soon. The darkness was complete. and I didn't have the beginning of an idea of what we might be walking into. I don't like that. The thunder? It was so loud. Who knows what it might wake up. Oh, no, 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 no. That was only a dog. That was the hound of the Baskervilles, and I want to go home. The house is right up ahead on that rise, 50 yards more, and... That, that dog is getting closer. That's a pet. Who's Dracula's? There he is. There he is. He's, he's going to jump at us. <laughs> Doesn't look vicious. He's as big as a horse. Oh, here, boy, here. He's encouraging him. Oh, no, no, easy, boy, easy. Ah, oh, that's a fine animal. He's more afraid of us than we are of him. We got a better reason. Ah, he's quieting down. That's a good boy. Come on. We'll take him to the house with us. I hope they like dogs there. Uh, Is that the house? Must be. I don't like it. It looks like a tomb, and Grant never was up here, so... Oh, it's just an old house. Architect had a lousy sense of humor. Barry, the dog. Rowling now. What's the matter, boy? What's the matter? He stopped dead. Barry, he's staring at that house as though... As though though he didn't know it, that's all. Come on, he'll follow us. He's not following us. Well, he's running away, Barry, in panic. Well, he's a neurotic hound, that's all. Uh, let's stop worrying about him. Your uncle asked us to come down. Hmm, the house maybe isn't pretty, but so far we haven't seen anything wrong. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Barry, knock. Well, there's a bell pull here. Oh. Not exactly a happy tinkle, but... Uh... I'm not sure for whom that bell's tolling, but I hope it's not for us. I hope somebody answers it soon. Somebody dressed in the latest in shrouds. I know I'm being silly, but if I weren't, I'd I'd be screaming. Now, you stick to being silly while I stick to... Maybe everybody went to the movies, huh? Oh, you are. Hello, I I hope we haven't waked you, but... uh, uh, Well, I'm Barry Craig, and this is Miss Ruth Adams. What about it? Mr. Reed asked us down. Who? Mr. Reed, Mark Reed. No, Mr. Reed, here. You better go. Here, now, wait a minute. This is the old tower house, isn't it? It is. Then Mark Reed's here. You're insane. Now, that's my foot blocking your doorway. Now, Mark Reed's here. He owns the house. He phoned me earlier tonight, and he sent Miss Adams a telegram asking us both to come down here. He didn't phone. He didn't send a telegram. He doesn't live here. Well, maybe you don't know him, huh? How long have you been? I've been a housekeeper here for 20 years. Never heard of any Mr. Reed. There's no Mr. Reed here. Go away. You could be making an honest mistake. You better step away from the door, though. We're coming in. I wouldn't be so sure of that. Oh, reinforcements? Got a gun, Barry? Mm, The complete householder. I have a gun, and I'm prepared to use it. Mrs. Dunn, what is all this? Some story about a Mr. Reed. Reed? I'll spell it for you. That won't be needed. Why are you trying to force your way into my house? We were invited here. By whom? Reed. Oh, maybe I'm getting monotonous, but it's still Reed. That doesn't explain your presence on my doorstep. This is his home. Fiddlesticks. 
I purchased this house 21 years ago. It is mine. My name is Loomis. Barry? I don't know. My head's starting to spin. Uh, Mr. Loomis, has this house always been known as the old tower house? It is known by that name now. Always is a long time. It has been called the old tower house ever since I have lived here. Well, for a lead nickel, I'd buy the theory that Reed was a ghost. But ghosts don't make phone calls. They don't send telegrams. I'm not very well acquainted with the habits of ghosts. I suggest you carry on your investigation into their customs elsewhere. I should like to shut the door. Oh, sorry, but there's... that rain's pretty strong now. Our cab's gone back to town. Mind our coming in and phoning for another one? We have no phone. Well, in that case, we'll accept your hospitality. I haven't offered it. You're not going to send a lady out in that rain. I... Well, come in, please. Thanks. Mrs. Dunn, will you prepare a couple of the guest rooms for Miss... Uh, Adams. For Miss Adams and Mr. Craig. Yes, Mr. Loomis. You can wait here in this room. We'll wait. I don't care for guests in my house. Under the circumstances, I cannot help myself. I hope you will find your rooms comfortable, but I do not greatly care. Good night. Hmm. He's been taking lessons on how to become the perfect host. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for trying to cheer me up. It's all so strange. Barry, where is my uncle? I don't know. Do you have the telegram with you, the, the one he sent? Well, I think... Uh, no, not with me. It would be in my bag in another purse. Oh, your bag. That reminds me. I left it outside on the doorstep. I'd better go get it before it gets drenched to the pigskin. Uh, come back quick. Well, don't worry. Now... Uh... Where did I put... For the second time that night, I was out on Mr. Loomis's doorstep. I began to feel like little Eva heading the wrong way. Well, that didn't work. It would have to be the bells again. Who the devil? Oh, you. Me. I was getting Miss Adams' bag when the door blew shut. Uh, come in, come in. Ruth. Not in the room I left her. That scream must have come from farther down the hallway. Now, what's this room? It's the library. Ruth. Ruth. The door's locked. Where's the key? I I don't know. Mrs. Dunn looks after the keys. I... Well, there's no time. Excuse me while I try to ruin a library door. Now, look here. I'm too busy. The library's empty. Not exactly. On the floor near the fireplace. Ruth. Ruth's the size of a baseball on the back of her head. She may have fallen. Or been struck. Ruth. Here. All right. Take it easy. My head hurts. It should. What happened? Someone hit me. From behind, I, I, I didn't see. What made you come to this room? Well, I heard groans, and, and then the door was open. Groans? From from him. From who? The man in the chair near the desk. I, I, I can't look at him. He was grinning at me. Yeah, let's get you up now. Come on. There. How's that? I'm all right. Fine. Now, which man in what chair? Well, right there in that... In the... There's nobody in that chair. Your rooms are ready. But there was someone. A man, a middle-aged man. His, his eyes were staring straight ahead. And there was blood on his shirt, a lot of blood. Now, now, now take a deep breath. There's no hurry. He died as I came in. I, I could feel the cold air of death on my skin. He grinned at me and he died. Oh, this girl is hysterical. This room's always kept shut. Well, the windows? Mm, boarded up. Only one door. Maybe it was your imagination, Ruth. No. She did see something. What? I've lived in this part of the country all my life. That's how I know. The man she saw was the former owner of this house. He died with a bullet through his heart. In this room. In that chair. Then I was right. The only thing is, it all happened... 80 years ago. <laughs> 
That slowed conversation down to nothing. I took Ruth up to her room, checked it, made sure no one would be able to get in once she locked the door behind her, and then I started out. Barry? Yeah? Before I realized that man in the library was dead, I touched him. And then I wiped my hands on his handkerchief. Look at it, Barry. Okay. Yeah. It was blood I wiped off my hands. Two ghosts who died 80 years ago still bleed. Well, I didn't have a good answer for that. I just made sure she locked her door, and I went off to my room and tried to sleep. I had my troubles. I was glad when morning arrived, along with the eggs, bacon, and coffee. Oh, well, it's a nice breakfast, Mrs. Dunn. Yes, sir. I trust you slept well, Miss Adams? Uh, uh, yes, I slept well. Yeah, good. Ah, that will be your taxi, Mr. Craig. Well, oh, right on time. Glad he let us finish breakfast. You ready, Ruth? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. All right. Thanks for your hospitality, Mr. Loomis. Not at all. We'll find our own way out. Well, what do you know? Mr. Lomas was telling the truth. Let's take a taxi, huh? We got into the cab and drove away. It took a little longer for Ruth to start worrying about it than it had taken me. Barry, the cab driver, it's the same one as last night. Yes, quite a happy coincidence. Coincidence? Keep your voice down. No coincidence at all. Our boy up front is working dirty hand and glove with dear Mr. Loomis. How do you know? Oh, we found out last night there was no phone at the house. How did Loomis manage to get a cab out here so early in the morning? Oh. Then after he tried to frighten us away from the tower house, the cab driver stayed here. Uh-huh. Shh. <gasps> what are you going to do with that gun? Apply the back end of it as soon as he slows up for the turn. Like this. I hadn't any choice. He disapproved of our low voice conversation. He was reaching for his own gun when I lent him mine, behind the ear. The car stalled, which was nice. I tied him up, dumped him at the side of the road, and went back to the old tower house. The dog, he's crying, Barry. Yeah, around the side of the house, at the cellar door. Oh, he's running away. Probably decided we're friends of Mr. Loomis. This is what he was listening to from the cellar. That sounds like... like digging. Let's go down and check. Barry! It's Mr. Loomis. He's digging a hole. <gasps> that body! The ghost you saw last night. That's Mark Reed, Ruth. And what Mr. Loomis is digging is a grave. Isn't it, Mr. Lomas? What? No comments. Or have you been working too hard? Get out of here. I don't think so. Why did you murder Reed? I didn't. He shot himself. And you're trying to protect his good name? Very well. I did murder Mr. Reed. A gentleman with a great deal of cash on hand. Cash he was going to leave to your charming companion. You reel it off so well, keep going. I have better ideas for that money. Mark Reed became frightened of Mrs. Dunn and myself, who'd worked for him for so long. He sent for you. I tried to have the cabbie keep you from coming here, but... Well, such frankness on your part wouldn't be wise, would it? Unless something's changed. Your voice changed quality a few moments ago. Lots of changes. What happened? Mrs. Dunn show up at the head of the stairs with a gun in her hand? Quick, shoot! <laughs> She wasn't quick enough. Amateurs never are. They don't realize how heavy a pull you need on a trigger. Don't worry about her, Mr. Loomis. I just winged her shoulder. I'm not worrying about her. I should have realized that. Courtesy stops outside the death cells, doesn't it? We got them all into the cab and drove to Dorning. We had a nice jail. They're glad to welcome Mr. Loomis, Mrs. Dunn, and the cab driver. 
Mark Reed went elsewhere. I wish he'd asked you to come to him earlier. You'd have liked him, but forget it if you can. I'll try. Barry, when we were in the cellar, Mrs. Dunn came in, but not from the outside. From a fake door in the library is where she came. I expected her. But how did... You, well, you yourself told me when you went into the library, you felt a breath of cold air on your skin. But the windows were all boarded up, as I mentioned, so... You knew there had to be another door to the cellar, as it turned out. <laughs> you know, this is a much nicer trip than the one yesterday. Uh, Mrs. Donna just tried to kill you, then. You were traveling deeper into danger. Now, about the only danger you're in, unless you get to the other side of the car... Is, uh, danger of this, sir? Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Barry. Yeah? I got a secret. What? I'm not afraid. Maybe. But I am. Next week's story is called The Corpse That Couldn't Swim. Of course, we didn't really know whether you have he been could listening swim or not. To William Gargan he was in dead when we met. exciting transcribed but... mystery drama from the adventures of Barry Craig, confidential investigator. Tonight's story, Ghosts Don't Die in Bed, was written by Louis Vitties. <laughs> that with the program you have just heard, we conclude the present Barry Craig series. We hope you have enjoyed them, and we look forward to bringing them to you again sometime in the not-too-distant future. We would like to call your attention to the fact that next week, Dragnet changes time of broadcast, and also that next week, Lux Radio Theater joins the NBC network on Tuesday night for your better listening pleasure. Consult your local newspaper for the time of broadcast of the Lux Radio Theater, over this NBC radio station. The National Broadcasting Company has brought you an NBC Radio Network production with William Gargan, starring as Barry Craig, confidential investigator, directed by Arthur Jacobson. Also heard were Jack Moyles, Charles Lung, Betty Lou Gerson, and Virginia Gregg. This is John Lang speaking. Here is some information that will help you to know more about CARE, C-A-R-E. The letters stand for Cooperative for American Remittances Everywhere, Incorporated. It is a non-profit organization specifically set up by America's mass relief agencies to provide an effective, economical way for Americans to send food and other essentials to needy persons overseas on a person-to-person basis. CARE is approved by the United States government and works under favorable agreements with countries abroad. You may send a CARE package to a specific person or group. Simply give your name and address and the name and address of the recipient and you will receive a signed receipt upon delivery. If you do not know someone abroad you want to help, one of CARE's member agencies will choose a needy family for you. Five dollars delivers the new basic CARE food package containing 26 pounds of meat, beans, sugar, and milk powder. Ten dollars will send the larger standard package. Remember, freedom is threatened when starvation and suffering persist. Food will help whip communism in economically weak countries. Send your contribution today to CARE. C-A-R-E, New York. This is the NBC Radio Network.